Let's say you want to make your video file size as small as possible while still containing all the quality that YouTube wants from you, as well as making it very streamable that YouTube can quickly encode and get it live as soon as possible. What type of settings should you use for all that? That's coming up. Hey guys, my name is Tim Schmoyer and it is Thursday. Time to do some YouTube Q&A with you guys like we do every week. Ron Buckles wrote and asked this. Your videos will process faster if you encode into a streamable file format. How do I encode my videos into a streamable file format? Good question, Ron. I will put a link in the description text of this video right here on YouTube that'll go to YouTube's page uh, where they give you all the recommended bit rates and resolutions and settings and coding settings and everything that you need to optimize your video when you render it out and export it so that it's optimized as perfectly as possible for YouTube. I'm going to show you on my computer how I set these settings before I render out these video creators videos and all videos that I do. But before that, let me just give you like a real basic summary of what you're looking for. Basically, you want it in an MP4 video format. You want the audio to be encoded as AAC and you want the codec to be H.264. The resolution that you export your video as should be the same resolution that the video is actually shot in. So if you shot in 1080p, then render out that video in 1080p. And the same thing with frame rates. If you shot at 24 frames per second, then export your video also at 24 frames per second. And if you have control over the bitrate setting, just give YouTube as much data as you can. But if you do need to limit it because of your upload speed and things like I do, then they say for 1080p video footage, give them about like an 8 megabit per second bitrate. Or for 720p, about a 5 megabit uh, per second bit rate would be sufficient. And if you're recording your audio in stereo, then ideally they want that at a 384 bit rate. Personally, I bring mine down to 256 because all I'm doing is just speech. Like there's, I don't think there's any reason, like you're not gonna notice any difference between 256 and 384, but 384 is what they ask for, so if you wanna get it like perfect, you can just go with that. Where you'll find all these different settings for rendering your video will be different depending on what editing software you're using. And some editing softwares, especially the cheaper ones, won't even give you access to set some of these. They'll just tell you you want high quality, low quality, or like super high quality, or something like that. And you just got to pick one and go with what it says. But I am on a Mac and I am using Adobe Premiere Pro CS 5.5. So I'll take you to my computer and show you where I find all these settings for me. Here's last week's video. So I'll edit it. Just going to go to File and then Export Media or Command E if you don't the sh keyboard shortcut on Mac. And so I get two views here. This one, let me uh, make this a little bigger for you. This is what the source looks like, which is what my actual timeline here. And this is what it's going to look like when I export it. So same thing, which is exactly what I want. So I have, uh, the, I have it named here. I want to export audio, video and audio. And then this is the output, and this is the source. So the source is what the actual video footage is. And it's 1080p um, footage. Pixel aspect ratio is 1. And the frame rate is 23.976 frames per second, which I recommend is probably the best um, frame rate to use for getting the most like film-like look. And so that's what I shoot pretty much everything. It's also better for low light and settings and things like that. Progressive scan, uh, which we don't know if that is. We don't need to get into that here. Here's the duration. Um, 48k hertz um, and then stereo. So basically, when I output it, I want it to be the exact same settings. So uh, 1080p right here, same frame rate, progressive scan. AAC is the um, audio codec at 256, like I told you. 48 um, hertz right here, just like I have it down here. And then it's in stereo, variable bit rate, and I'll get into all these in a second. Uh, one pass, how many scans I want it to take. Uh, and here's the target bit rate and the maximum bit rate, which I have is set to 12 as the target and 8. But I could set that down to 8, or, um, like I said, because of it being 1080p. So let me show you guys um, what this uh, looks like. Let me make this a little bit bigger for you. So down here is where I set all the settings, all right? So here I'm under the video tab. Uh, 1920 pixels by 1080, that's 1080p. Uh, here's where I can set the frame rate, but since my photo is just in 23.976, that's what we're going to keep this one in. Uh, widescreen, always upload in widescreen if you if you can. Like if you're still shooting on something that's still like a square, I definitely recommend not doing that anymore. <laughs> uh, this is we don't need to do. I don't usually do that because it's just going to the web. It's going to recompress it anyway. Variable um, bit rate, that means it's going to look at how, what the bit rate is in each frame, like how much data information is in there. And it's going to um, 
uh, analyze it, like how many times do you want to analyze it? Again, since we're just going to YouTube, they're going to re-encode it anyway. Uh, I usually just do one pass. You can have it do two passes, which will give you higher quality and it's a little bit of a larger file, but the quality difference for the web on that um, isn't really that large. This is um, this is constant bitrate, which means like I don't. You're telling it I don't care like what you think the bitrate is each frame. Just always give it the consistent constant bitrate. The variable will mean it will go up and down based on how much data and information is happening in each frame, and adjust accordingly so you don't get like these super overinflated uh, video files uh, that have like they're like really big. Like this will just optimize it that way. Target bitrate. This is kind of you know where you want it to kind of focus on since it is a variable. Say yeah, you know focus around. I have a 1080p, so I'm focusing around 12. But according to YouTube, you could drop that to eight. And then this is the maximum. Like, what do you want it to go up to? And maybe for something like this, I put it like 10 or 11. You know, um, that would be the settings that YouTube would give you uh, to use. So that, so that's all the video settings. And I have the audio tab right here. And um, oh, where's the? Um, I have it set on H.264 as the encoding format right here. You know, there's lots of other ones, but that's the one. Uh, H.264 in an MP3 or MP4 format. Uh, that's what that's what YouTube recommends. Okay, the audio, uh, AAC is what they suggest. I record it in stereo, so I'm going to keep it in stereo. Frequency, I'm going to keep it at 48. If you do, you know, 44.1, that's fine too. Most people aren't going to, you know, it's not going to be a big difference. Audio quality, you want to high. This is what YouTube said. Hey, boost this all the way up. Um, basically, they want 128 um, kilobits per second per channel, and stereo is two channels, right and left channel, whereas um, mono would be just one channel, so they would just say um, 128 total. Or if you're doing stereo, two channels, they say you want two 128 uh, bitrate channels. And if you don't know what bitrate is, it's basically the amount of information uh, that's stored in the file, and they want more information, So, which will then lead to higher quality. But for speech, like all I'm doing is like, 256 is totally f sufficient if all you're doing is just speech. I mean, even 96 would be sufficient for speech. Um, 128 would be great. Um, so I'm already giving them like way more than they they really want. Um, so 256 is fine, and I want it to be based on bit rate here. And so uh, you could do some of this other stuff, maximum render quality. Again, if you're going for like so, something really high, super high quality, but Again, as you're just sending it to web, I would recommend just you know hitting export after this, um, and then uh, that, those would be all the settings that I use. And if I want to double check, I can just make sure that my out, my source and my output look exactly the same. That's what I want to see. I'll give you an example. Like let's say I switched it from um, uh, let me put it like here, you know. So now I switch it to 480p. So now this is using a different resolution than my source. You see how these black bars at the top. So my source doesn't have that, but now my output does because I'm not exporting in the right resolution. So if you have black bars around your videos, that's because uh, now I'm actually exporting a, a, um, a square video, a uh, four by three video when I'm using a 16 by nine like video frame in it. So it adds these black bars to fix it. So uh, just keep it on um, you know the same thing and those black bars and the output will go away. Again, guys, if you want to dig into any of this in more detail, check out the link. I'll put it in the description text below this video on YouTube. It'll take you to YouTube's official recommendation page. You can dig into all this a little bit more there. I'd love to hear from you guys. Comments below if you have found any particular settings that help you the most in getting your videos as high quality as possible onto YouTube without making like a really big file size or without forcing YouTube to take a really long time to encode it. So all those ideas and suggestions are very much appreciated down there below. And if this is something you're trying to figure out out right now, definitely recommend that you check out what other people are saying down there. Always really good, helpful stuff. And if this is your first time here, I'd love to have you subscribe every Thursday. We do YouTube Q&A just like this to help you guys out. On Tuesdays, we take a look at some online video news, talk about the implications that all the updates around YouTube have for us as creators. And then on Wednesdays, to give you guys some YouTube tips, ideas, suggestions, advice, all that type of stuff. Because I really believe that a lot of you guys have messages that could really change people's lives and really help them if those people could just find you and hear what you have to say. So thank you for letting me be a part of helping you guys grow your YouTube audiences and your channels here. Subscribe and I'll see you guys again next week. Bye.